Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. Welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Um, it is, it's a great week. It's a great week. Yeah, how are you doing, Taylor? Honestly, I'm pretty stressed, but it's fine. Oh, well, it, it happens. Yeah, you know, yeah. it does, it does in fact be like that. Um, yeah. so as we're recording right now, you know, we just came back from it was just easter yes and if you listen last week um pretty much me and savannah every year on this podcast have had a conversation the same conversation um debating whether or not you should eat the eggs that you die Mm -hmm. on easter Mm -hmm. um and so i promised you guys that i would eat one and come back with a review and i almost forgot about my promise to you guys. Yes. Okay. Because what was your opinion before you tried one? You said that it would taste like vinegar. That's what I thought. Or, yeah. So that's what you thought. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought... Because you, like... If you don't know, when you dye Easter eggs, you, like, put a little bit of vinegar in water and then, like, food coloring mm-hmm. to yeah. make them colorful. So I thought it would taste like vinegar because it, like, sits in vinegar for, like, a hot minute. A while, honestly. But, okay... If you're dying, it doesn't permeate the shell, though. But anyways, we're not going to fight about this. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But yeah, I did, in fact, eat one of Savannah's eggs. And while it was purple, okay, Mm -hmm. it was a purple egg. It tasted like a regular egg. So see debunked. Yeah. So I'm right. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, So, yeah. Yeah. I made you come over and try one. Mm -hmm. You almost didn't. And I would have been. I don't know. I would have been on this topic again next year. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And you know what? <laughs> Watch us still come around. No, I'm just kidding. We will yeah. remember this time. But that's yep. so funny. Yeah. Did you still throw them at trees? Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, we did. <laughs> because we wanted to introduce my niece, um, Everly, to the tradition of throwing them at trees. But she was actually more interested in, like, throwing them once at a tree and then, like, stomping on them. Oh, Yeah. That's the same same yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah, I mean, I feel like she would like it better if she was stronger. Like, you know, she didn't really yes. break them when she hit the tree. Me, yeah. on the other hand, I can, like, explode the egg. Oh, nice. So nice. it was very fun. Love I've never that. tried it. Maybe I should do that tradition. You should. You really, it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got fun. some, I have some trees in my backyard. Mm-hmm. And I have some eggs left. Mm, maybe. Ooh, you should at least <laughs> throw one of them. I promise yeah. it feels so good. To just okay. see it explode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'll let you know if I do that. But yeah. <laughs> um, I do want to... Um, I have a little bit more on Easter, I guess. Uh, we actually had Easter at my house for the first time, which was kind of cool. That's fun. We got to, you know, have some people over. And me and my sister, Adriana, we were, like, chalking in my driveway. So that's still there that's um, adorable yeah a little fun thing to come home to <laughs> yeah no that's so cute um but yeah it was nice it was nice outside and everything it was good so pretty. spring vibes yeah it was spring really spring vibes i everly made me hide easter eggs like 500 times and she's two so really? like i have to hide this, them in the same spot because first of all mm-hmm. there's only so many spots and she had like 50 eggs yeah so Oh, did your mom, did you get a Easter basket? I Sorry, did. did the Easter Bunny bring you a basket? <laughs> yeah, wrong correction. Yes, the Easter Bunny <laughs> did, in fact, bring me a basket. I have so much candy. I got a basket, too. I don't want any cavities, but I'm still going to eat the candy. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Um, I think I had another thing to mention. I don't remember what it was, though. You know? Oh, okay. So, have you seen those videos on TikTok that are, like, people talking about their waters oh yes water talk um so i guess the real question if you haven't seen this first of all it's like you put like little flavorings or syrups like in water like Mm sugar-free so like it's still technically water quote unquote but i don't really think that's still water yeah yeah they're like they do their water recipes and stuff yeah um (laughs) see i I mean, like, the water is still there, so, like, are you still getting hydrated? Well, yeah. Yes, I guess. I don't know. No, definitely you are. Just, like, with some sugar. Yeah. With some fake sweeteners. Yeah. 
can't really know. be that good for you. But I mean, it is good. I did. Um, I was influenced. And See, I bought me some. too. Me too. And I bought I bought another thing today. Which flavor did you get? I got the crush, um, like the orange soda crush. They have packets. Have you tried it? No. Man, I just want to know, like, does it taste bad because it's not carbonated? That's my question. I know. Because yeah. I saw some that was like A&W root beer and I was like, stale root beer sounds really gross. I know. But it kind of makes me intrigued. Like, is it good? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I got like the nerd strawberry one and I... I got that one too. I think it's good, but I think it's a little bit too sweet for me. Yeah, I like that one, but... Yeah, I would I would need to um I dilute it a lot. Yeah, I need I needed to dilute it way more. And some people put like t- multiple packets and I like know. Sh- and like what's it called like sh- syrup? Yes. And I'm like that would just be so so sweet. Mhm. Um yeah, I know. And I also went to uh Five Below to try to get the the Stanley Cup dupe because uh-huh. I was like maybe I'm gonna try to be like a water talk girl mm-hmm. but like I'm not actually because I don't I don't think I would ever get those syrups I would try like one or two packets like I got but yeah but anyways I tried to go and find it and they didn't have it no I need to go check couple. mine yeah because I want I'm not buying a Stanley I'm sorry I'm too poor yeah I'm not buying that either <laughs> but I'll buy a five dollar one mm-hmm, I'll mm-hmm. buy a five dollar anything because five dollars <laughs> is not that expensive, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, now that we've um bored everyone who doesn't care about water, <laughs> <laughs> just water, water and Easter. That's so mm-hmm. funny. Um. Okay. Well, I think I'm ready to to tell you my story today, Taylor. Let's do it. I'm ready. So this week I'm going to talk about another a cryptid i love talking about cryptids yeah we love cryptids around here i'm mm-hmm. so excited yeah so this one um is named momo momo mm-hmm. hmm. from missouri that's cute is actually, it called that because that's where it's from yes actually i was gonna say we're gonna find out <laughs> momo but... is short for the missouri monster mm-hmm. yeah i like that so, yeah so yeah we'll just call him momo but Missouri, Mo- Missouri Monster is, like, the official, I guess, name. Um, yeah. So, Momo is, <laughs> is an ape-like creature similar to Bigfoot. So, th- I feel like there's a lot of different Bigfoots. There are. I was just going to say it's, like, you know? Bigfoot's brother. Yeah. And then there's, like, the Yeti. There's, like, there's so many The Yowie. Ones. Yes, the Yowies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but this one I had never heard of, Momo. No, I've never heard of Momo. So he is, um, he or she, but I'll just, I'm, we're assuming it's a he. It's giving he so. energy, so. Yeah. yeah we're sorry to Momo. <laughs> I'm really, I'm sorry. Um, an ape-like creature similar to Bigfoot, um, large bipedal humanoid, you know, like Big, Bigfoot, mm-hmm. um, said to have a pumpkin-sized head. Mm, that's a pretty big head. Yeah, and he's about seven foot tall, which for people who don't use feet um, as measurements, (laughs) 2.1 meters, Hmm. um, and is covered in dark hair. Um, And also, this is a fun fact, he has like a putrid odor. Ew. Yeah. I mean, that's how I imagine like anything in the Bigfoot variety would smell, but like, ew. Yeah, that's true. I know, yeah, like, you see, like, a creature like that, it's gonna be dirty and smelly. Yeah, and just, like, it's so hairy, you know? It's just gotta smell bad. Uh Uh-huh, because you know he's not taking showers. Of course he's not (laughs) taking showers. No, he's, like, in the woods. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So, allegedly, this creature was sighted by numerous people in rural Louisiana, Missouri, in 1971 and 1972. Oh, uh, and the first sighting was in July of 1971 near, uh, like, outside of Louisiana. Okay, this might be a really dumb thing to say. Where I don't know where Missouri is on the map. Close <laughs> to Louisiana? Um, I'm guessing, see, like, now you're making me question things. I'm like, I need to look this up because I think Louisiana is just like a city in Missouri. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought you were saying, because I thought Missouri was like up north more. 
then because like Louisiana is at the bottom of the United States in case you don't know um yeah in case you also don't know me and Savannah are like the worst possible people if you want to ask any question about geography we do <laughs> not know okay all. okay I looked it up so yeah um yeah, Louisiana is a city in Missouri, nice. so it's not, <laughs> nice. it's obviously not the state. So I, I was like, wait, did I like type that out wrong? Because, no. yeah. okay, so no, it's actually, according to this, um, it is sort of on the border. So it's like the border of um, Missouri and Illinois. Yeah. I'm looking at a map now, and this makes a lot more sense now that I know where Missouri is. (laughs) Missouri is, like, in the absolute middle of the United States, and it is, like, not too far from Louisiana, but there's, like, a big state in between. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so not to confuse anyone, this is a separate city. (laughs) Okay. All right. So, um, it was cited by people in this city, Louisiana, in Missouri, um, in 1971 and 1972. And the first sighting was in July of 1971, um, and there were picnickers, so I guess, like, pe- people taking, having a picnic, mm-hmm. but I I saw picnickers, and I was like, that's such a weird Yeah, word. I have never heard that, but it does make sense. <laughs> yes. Um, and the way this, like, as I continue with this little story... Um, it sounds like there was, like, a bunch of people, like, separate people picnicking. Yeah, I imagine, like, a big park full of people picnicking. Yes, yeah, so imagine that. Um, and so all these people, and then there are these people, Joan Mills and Mary Ryan, they are having a picnic together, and they reported, um them and like everybody else there but they're like the main ones who actually told the story you know um they reported encountering a foul smelling black man-like monster (laughs) oh okay so like black fur um man-like seven foot tall monster Mm -hmm. with a pumpkin sized head furry body and hair obscuring its eyes yeah i'd be scared if that monster attacked me yeah so they didn't really get attacked per se but they did like everybody went and locked themselves in their cars yeah i would do the same so which is scary like imagine that like some creature comes out of the woods and you have to just go hide in your car yeah i would be so scared so momo came and ate the picnic food Uh, momo was just hungry yeah on like several blankets and then disappeared into the brush Mm. That's so. crazy, but honestly, he's just hungry. Yep. Feed Momo. Mm-hmm. He's just hungry. Um, so, this is not the only sighting. So, there was a second one that was, like, sort of the most well-known one. Is This is one I'm about to tell. Um, which, surprisingly, it came, like, almost exactly a year later. Oh, no way. So, the first sighting that I just said was July of 1971, and then this one is July 1972. So, this one's, this one we have an actual date, like July 11th Mm of 1972. So, like, yeah, a whole year later. That's crazy. The anniversary of Momo. Mm Mm-hmm. So, the, um, the children of Edgar Harrison, um, because I guess... Yeah, that's just how they're labeled here, Mm -hmm. the children of Edgar Harrison. So he had two young boys and he had um, a daughter. So the two young boys, they were playing in the backyard, um, which is, it was on the rural outskirts of Louisiana, Missouri. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And uh, suddenly their older sister, she was like in the kitchen and she heard them screaming Mm-hmm. And running towards the house. And she looked out the window and saw a huge, dark-haired, man-like creature holding a dead dog. Oh, no. Or, you know, what looked like a dead dog. Mm-hmm. She wasn't sure. Mm-mm. But she said it had a pumpkin-shaped head and large, glowing orange eyes. 
Oh, no, no. Yeah. Um, and her brothers agreed that, like, this is what they saw and that's what they were they were running from. Mm -hmm. You know? So, can you just imagine that? You're in the kitchen just, like, I don't know what she was doing, cooking or doing something. And you look out the window, your brothers are running I would be so scared. I would, and then you look back and see Momo carrying a yeah, dead like, dog. No, oh my god, mm -hmm. I would lose my mind. I would be so afraid that it would like get in the house somehow. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. So I guess I mean they were fine. Nothing happened to them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's like the most um, famous sighting of Momo. So after this, uh, a few more sightings occurred that year. Um, actually, the fire department chief, and he was also a member of the city council, Richard Allen Murray, he reported driving along the creek bed, and he saw a massive upright creature in front of his car, like, in, in the headlights. Mm -hmm. So, he's like, he saw Momo. <laughs> okay. Which is crazy. And it's like, he's more, I guess he's more reputable than, yeah, like, he's famous. kids. Yeah, because he's like the fire department chief and a member of city council. Yeah. So he's like, I saw this. And they're like, okay, now we believe him. Yeah. Uh, so other people who had seen the creature, they said that they saw no real face on him except for two big glowing orange eyes. Just mm. like um, the daughter had said. Mm -hmm. And... Um, a few other people saw it up and down the Mississippi River, which is where um, Richard Murray found, like, saw him mm -hmm. um, on the Mississippi River. And after these sightings, um, they actually, the town put together a 20-person posse um, to hunt Momo. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, a one, a few things that's, I saw said that it was a 20 person group and then another thing I saw said a 30 person group so 20 to 30 people got together and they were like we're gonna go hunt this thing <laughs> so um they they like go off to hunt it but they um of course like at first they sort of tell the whole town they're like we're gonna go hunt this so they said that Marzolf Hill, which I guess is an area <laughs> mm -hmm. in in this city. Um, they said that Marzolf Hill was declared off limits to the public. Oh. Um, so they're like, you guys gotta stay out of here because we're gonna hunt this thing. We don't want to accidentally shoot anyone. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, so they were taking it serious. But unfortunately, nothing was ever found. Where the heck is Momo? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, remember when I said Edgar Harrison? Yeah, his, his little his kids. kids. Yeah. yeah. So, he comes back into the story because he was circulating reports of UFO sightings near... Edgar. Um, near the city. Edgar, what's going on? He was like, yeah, I don't know if he saw the aliens or, like, somebody else reported it, but he's like, there have been UFO sightings here. So, um, and then also... This guy named Hayden Hughes, he was the director of a private UFO bureau. He arrived to the area to investigate. Mm. So now they're they're starting to think that Momo is like an alien. Oh, wow. So uh, Hayden Hughes, he found a footprint and said that it belonged to a prehistoric man and that he, um, he urged that Momo should not be killed if he was found. Well, good. I would agree. Yeah, even even though he had a dead dog in his hands. Yeah, I mean, he's an animal, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's sad, mm -hmm. but animals eat other animals. Mm-hmm, that's true. Um, so the tracks, I don't know if it was the same tracks, pro probably the same tracks that were found. Um, they were submitted to the director of the Oklahoma City Zoo, um, named Lawrence Curtis, and he said that the tracks were from an unknown primate species, and he said it was not a monster. So he oh. thought Momo was a hoax. Mm. Yeah. So we got we got somebody actually investigating. He's like, no, this is fake. Hmm. So I don't know. Um, and since then, there really has not been any more sightings. 
So they kind of got left in the 70s. Yeah. Um, it seems like Momo was just, if he was real, he was just passing through Missouri in 1972 and he was seen by some people. But then he left and was just like never seen again. That's crazy. You know? And then one article, I love this. He said, they said in this article, Momo is no mo. <laughs> that's funny. That's a good one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a good play on words there. <laughs> yeah, he is no mo. Um, so there is like sort of like a follow up in the news six years later in 1978. Uh, Harrison who like edgar harrison yeah he said that the area was disturbed by an annual visit usually around july 11th um by something that howled and snorted like a cougar okay and there's no cougars in the area so he you know he's saying that momo comes in yeah yeah and he also claimed that each spring something tore up a kennel in his neighbor's house Okay, well, that could be any animal. Yeah, it could. <laughs> so, I mean, either one of those could be any animal. <laughs> yeah, facts. Um, in 2015, there was another follow-up where Dave Moeller, the editor of the Press Journal, he wrote a piece about Momo, and he talked about, or he talked to the Harrison children, who were, you know, adults now, and they sort of chose not to talk about it, actually, because they were ridiculed about it in the past. Aww. So, I don't know if that means that they made it up. That doesn't really help believe... either one. Yeah, it doesn't help either way. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Because it could go either way. Like, either they're embarrassed because they were lying about it, and they're like, you know, haha. Yeah. Or it's just the truth, and they're like, we're tired of being called whatever. Uh huh. Hmm. But also, if it was just like a lie, why would they not, as adults, come out and be like, "Oh yeah, we made that up." That's true. That's a good mm -hmm. point. Yeah, I don't know. I do believe they saw that, but I just don't know if it was a monster. True. Like yeah. I definitely believe that they saw it like a big animal, but like, could it not have been a bear? Like just a, like a really big one. That's true. I feel like that's, yeah, that's, like, the same thing for a lot of these, like, Bigfoot-type creatures. Yeah. Or, like, it know. could have had disease. Like, I don't know. It wasn't yeah. that, it wasn't actually attacking them. It was just eating. Like, some sort of, like, mutated yeah. creature. Yeah. I don't know. I don't hmm. know, Momo. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, you know, like, a lot of cryptids, they, um will become like a tourist destination oh, like for sure. make their make their city a tourist destination. Mm -hmm. That did not really happen with Momo. No, Momo. I know. I know like with um Mothman, you go to Point Pleasant, they have stuff there for Mothman. Like there's they make it into a thing, you know. Oh, for sure. But this city they they just didn't do it. Um That's there sad was for Momo. There was actually a Momo Street Festival for a few years, but they no longer have it. Oh, that's sad. And he also did get a movie. Oh. So, yes, I know. We, we have to watch it. In 2019, there was like a docu... It says it said it was a docudrama horror film wow. called Momo, okay. the Missouri Monster. We have to watch it. I know. Oh, <laughs> And it was a dra dramatization of the events in 1972, um, where Cliff Cliff Brockman and James Bobo Fay they were in it, and they um, are actually in Finding Bigfoot on the Animal Planet. No way. Yeah, so they're they're in this movie. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so I wonder if they believe in Momo since they're like on Finding. Bigfoot. I would say that they definitely do. Yeah, you know probably. how I'm obsessed I used to be with Finding Bigfoot? Big obsessed. Oh, really? Yes. The show? Yeah. I've watched like so, every episode. So do you know those people? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I listed their names because I was like, she might know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, so this movie has a 3.8 out of 10 on IMDb. Yikes. But they don't ever do horror movies justice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we'll give it that. Um, yeah, so we we definitely have to watch that. Yeah. 
And also, Momo did get a ride at Six Flags. What? So, Six Flags in St. Louis, Missouri, um, it, they had a ride named after Momo for, um, but they don't have it anymore. They only had it from 1973 until 1994. Oh, that's a long time, though. I wanted to ride the yeah. Momo. I know. I don't know what the ride was called, but they just yeah. said it was named after him. So. That's crazy. I love that for him. See, at least he got some stuff, you know? I know. Yeah, at first. But now it's just, like, kind of faded out. Uh, we got to bring back Momo. Guys, if you have seen Momo, call us. <laughs> yeah, call us with the number that you don't have. <laughs> 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 Email us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that is the story of Momo. I... I don't know. See, like, these Bigfoot creatures, I just don't know if I believe they're real or not. Because, like, it could... I guess there is a possibility since there mm -hmm. are so many different sightings in different places. Yeah. But... I don't know yeah. either. I really don't know. I just don't. I don't even know what to say. Because, like, I ne I'm so on the fence. Both ways. Yeah. I, I mean, you have more experience with Bigfoot creatures because, you know, you... <laughs> watch that show I mean, exactly I yeah me and my brother really wanted to be on that show like i'm really? I'm talking it was it's a serious obsession i haven't <laughs> watched it in a, in a while but it was big there okay the also on on that show because so, like i might have saw one episode or something i don't know yeah but on that show do they like believe that there's only one bigfoot or that there's like a bunch of them Th there's a bunch of them they okay. go around to, like, a bunch of different cities, like, where they've seen Bigfoot. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, yeah. They All definitely right. talk about him like he's one, but they definitely know there's multiple. Okay. I, see, now I want to watch that show. <laughs> you really should. They do have, like, they, in it, they are trying to find him still. So they go, like, on an investigation every episode. And they do find some evidence. Like, whether or not it's real or not, you know, that's up to you. But, mm, yeah. Okay. But... I love the Momo story. I love Momo whether or not I believe he's real or not. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he's not too. mean. He, yeah, he just wanted to be on a picnic. Yeah, and, yeah. like, who doesn't? You know, I can't blame mm -hmm. him. Really and he can't. chased some kids, like, so what? Yeah, I would do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you who's not as nice as Momo, okay? is the story that I have for you today. Um, oh, no. I have the legend of... The Dover Demon. Da -da -da. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's just get right on into it. So um, I will be taking us to a town called Dover, Massachusetts. Okay. So there's no setup. So let's just jump right on in. We're going to take it back all the way to April 21st, 1977. And so on that night, a 17-year-old named Bill Bartlett claimed that he was driving around the town that night, just driving around Dover, chilling, when he saw a large-eyed creature with tendril-like fingers and glowing eyes that sat on top of a broken stone wall on Farm Street in the town of Dover. Oh, my God. That sounds scary. Yeah, and that, like, he's only 17. I would be very scared. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, no matter what it is. Um... So at first, Bill said that he thought it was just like a dog or a cat somehow had got up there. But as he drove closer, he realized that it was like very strange looking, like almost unearthly. Um, he said that it was like disproportionately large, like with a big watermelon shaped head. Um, oh, my God. Ours are kind of similar. They really are. So both <laughs> in the 70s, big heads, pumpkin head and a what did and you say, a watermelon. watermelon. And now let me read you this next line. Okay. He, Bill describes its eyes as glowing orange big glass marbles. Oh, my God. See, why Why is Momo and the Dover <laughs> Demon like the same? Right. Except for now it's not about to be the same. That was the only similarity. Okay. Okay. Um, so unlike Momo, the Dover Demon is hairless. Um, and mm -hmm. it has rough mm -hmm. flesh colored skin. Oh, so in my, oh my opinion, God. I think Momo is a little cuter yeah um i don't like f just hairless scares me honestly like you 
Um, you don't like the the hairless cats? Mm-mm. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Do you? Um, I, I've actually never been around one, like, in person, but I don't know if I would mind it. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. It's definitely <laughs> strange. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so, Bill also said that this little creature that he found, it didn't look like it had a nose, ears, or a mouth, or at least that he could see. So, that's scary. It, like, pretty much only has eyes and, like, a huge head. So, creepy. Um... So that same night, um, a 15-year-old named John Baxter reported seeing a similar creature on Miller Hill Road in Dover, literally just like an hour later after um, Bill had seen it. So John Baxter was walking home with his friend Pete Mitchell, and they both saw it. They described the creature as bipedal, and once the creature saw them, it ran into like a gully and stood behind a tree. And, like, so they, like, ran, obviously, like, when they saw it. And they turned to look back to, like, see if it's still there. And it was still standing behind that tree just watching them. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I really don't like that. Okay. Yeah, because, like, why is it watching you? Like, it's not chasing like... them, but it's just still watching them. Like, ew. Mm -hmm. Oh, that just sent chills down my whole body. I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> yeah. Ah. I don't like it. No. Definitely not. So that was both that both of those things happened on April 21st, 1977, and the next night, April 22nd, 1977, um another 15-year-old named Abby um Braham claimed to see a similar creature. Um but the difference between like the first two the night before and Abby's um sighting was that she describes that its eyes were green glowing instead of orange. So that's weird. So, do you think that's two different ones, or it, like, changed its eye color? I kind of think, like, it maybe it's two different ones. Because mm -hmm. everything else that she described was the same. Like, watermelon head, like, hairless, gray skin, big head, big eyes that were glowing, but instead of orange, they were green. So, I kind of think it was think just... Do you think one of them's good and one of them's evil? No, I think they're both pretty evil. Oh, in okay. my opinion. Well, maybe not. Like, they didn't get attacked, but, like, still creepy. Like, why are you watching them? Yeah. And also, it's all teenagers. So, like, it kind of makes it seem unbelievable. But also, like, is it just targeting teenagers? You know? Maybe it's targeting teenagers because it knows that they're not, like... Exactly. They're less likely to be believed. Exactly. And that's scary. Don't like that. Um, or another thing, maybe teenagers are just more aware of their surroundings. That's true. Because, you know, teenagers are probably doing something sneaky. And they got to be on the lookout. <laughs> yeah. And the adults, like... They could be around them, but they're just not paying attention. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. Or also, like, all these things happen, like, really late at night. So, like, maybe teenagers are, like, the only ones out yeah, at this hour. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. You know? So, I don't really know. But all of these kids who had seen all this all went to the police and told them what they saw. Because it was, like, that impactful. It wasn't just, like, yeah, we saw a creature. Like, no, they were all scared, even though nothing happened. So when they went, they were all asked to draw sketches of what they, like, saw that night. And Bill Bartlett, the first story that I told, he even wrote on his sketch, quote, I, Bill Bartlett, swear on a stack of Bibles that I saw this exact creature. Oh, my unquote. God. A stack of Bibles. A stack. Not one, not two, a stack. <laughs> so huh. um, this sketch will be on our Instagram if you want to see it. And I'll send it to you, Savannah, at the end because... I want okay. you to see, like, well, I'll send you the sketch so you can see what he thought it looked like. And then also, um, you know, it's literally him, like, writing, like, on the stack of Bibles. So. Okay. Yeah. And it'll also be on our Instagram if you want to see it. Just because, you know, obviously you want to see it. So, anyway, moving on. Um, so, after the police, obviously they had to do some investigating. But, like, there's not really any evidence, you know, other than the stories of what they said happened. But they were like, let's drive out to the locations of like where they said they saw this animal. So they go and before they even go, actually they lay out a map and they plot the spots like on a map so they can see like which, where they should go first and all that. When they did that, the three 
the like the three dots of the incidents line up in a perfect straight line that spans over two miles across the city of Dover. Oh no, I don't now, like that. <laughs> that to me really doesn't seem like a coincidence. Um, yeah, because like, how are you just gonna get a straight line? Right, what? right. And like when I first read the story, I was like. Maybe these kids are just, like, really bored and want to make up this huge story. But, like, the fact that it makes, like, a perfect line, it seems like these kids wouldn't have cared that much to make it seem that real, you know? Like, if it was a prank, like, I don't know. I know I wouldn't have tried that hard. Yeah. And but. also, I don't know. I don't know why this would be a prank anyway. Yeah, it's not funny. Like, yeah, it's like, like nobody's really getting got, you know? Uh-huh. So, I don't know. Um... So, cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman was the initial investigator and individual who actually named the creature the Dover Demon, and he he just named it that because. So, like, that is, like, pretty much the only interaction we have of the Dover Demon, like, the three that I told you. So, it's not really actually evil, you know, it didn't actually attack them, but that's just its name because it sounds good, you know. Right, yeah. I mean, because it's just, like, alliteration. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We love alliteration. Like the Missouri monster. Exactly. The oh my god. Wow. Dodo. We have connections this time. <laughs> Too many. It normally happens, but today it's heavy. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> Same. So this guy, Lauren Coleman, the cryptozoologist, um, he got a group of even more cryptozoologists and ufologists um together. And the people in the group were him, Joseph Nyman, Ed Fogg, and Walter Webb. And all of these people were like very well-known ufologists in eastern massachusetts at the time and walter webb was actually the assistant director director of the boston science museum so like these people are pretty accredited you know and trusted yeah in the huh. community um see so, like <clears throat> it's just like stuff like this makes me believe it so much exactly just... exactly like oh hmm. i like i kind of don't like it when there's a lot of facts because i'm like okay <laughs> this actually really did happen yes and it's like what is this thing literally literally because and i mentioned like ufologists like clearly they think something's going on here you know like uh -huh. alien uh -huh. <laughs> so and there was aliens in my story too oh wow. yeah okay get out of my head savannah <laughs> get out of my story <laughs> that's so funny um so even though like this group of people were like a bunch of people who studied like ufos um, the lead investigator, Lauren Coleman, he didn't actually think that they were dealing with, like, any alien phenomenon. Um, but because these people were, like, the most seasoned, like, scientists who were believed, like, in the community, that's why he asked them. So, like, people would not just immediately think it was a hoax. So, you know, that's cool, I suppose. But he did not think it was an alien. But I don't necessarily think that we should rule that out completely, either. So. Yeah, I mean, something with, like, big glowing eyes. Uh, and a big head, and it's, like, hairless and gray. Like, that, to me, sounds like the borderline basic alien. Yeah, it does. It <laughs> like, does. <laughs> and they're like, no, it's not an alien. I'm like, why are we skipping over that so quickly? <laughs> you know? I don't know. Um, so, um, Lauren Coleman had all four of those people, like, that he invited in his little group, um, interview not only the teens that saw the creature but also their families law enforcement and um different like educational and community members who knew the teens so they wanted like everybody's opinion and not only on like the situation but also like were the teens believable or like would they pull something like this like they really wanted to know so like that also makes me believe it because like they're so concerned with like the possibility of this creature they're like we have to figure it out you know? Right. Huh. So, like, hmm. me. Do they know something we don't? That's what I'm saying. Like, they're acting like they do. <laughs> so, hmm. it's good to keep in mind, I suppose. Um, so, in the investigation, they determined that, at least in their opinion, that the three teens did not, quote, unquote, contaminate each other with their stories. And they concluded that all their sightings were, like, genuine. At least what they actually believed happened. Okay. I mean, that's good yeah, that they didn't, like, talk exactly. to each other before. Exactly. And, you know. So, and the reason they were able to determine this was because this is in the 70s. So, obviously, like, cell phones not really, you know, existing at this point. And it also was um, spring break or 
whatever break would be at this time, like in school. So they were not like in school to tell each other what was going on. And like pretty much unless you were like really good friends, you were hanging out with like your school people on break. Um, yeah. I mean, and these yeah, people weren't friends with is. each other. So that's mm-hmm. also important to know. So, okay. So that rolls it out almost immediately for me. Exactly. Like I'm sure they, they definitely knew of each other and knew each other, but like not close friends. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how they determined, you know, they're not just making up a story. Um, And all three sightings were within a mile and a half of each other. So that's also, you know, doesn't seem like a coincidence. Um, Anyways, so moving on to some theories that are not, you know, some weird creature. Some people suggest that it could have been like a newborn elk or moose, which apparently is like seen in the area. Now, I don't really even know what a newborn elk or moose looks like, but I don't think it's bipedal. You yeah, know? I don't, I don't think it would like, be. And I don't can think they it even would walk? have a watermelon head. That's what I'm saying. Like they have antlers, maybe. I don't even know if they're born with antlers, so I don't even know. They probably wouldn't be born with them. So I don't really understand that, why they think it could be that, but that's what people said. A um, mutated one? Maybe. But Possibly. I don't know. I don't know about that. Me neither. And also, yeah, like not bipedal. And also, I think they they're born with hair. With exactly, fur. exactly. So, so, not the answer at all. Um, and police ended up telling reporters that the creatures were probably nothing more than a vacation school hoax. And I'm like, no. The scientists said otherwise, but of course, the police said no. Nah. We're hands out of that situation. Yeah, because it sounds like the police just don't want to worry about it. Exactly. Just like, They're like, whatever. Stupid kids. You know, common. <laughs> like, okay. Common police yep. um, activity where they're like, oh, a monster? We're just not going to exactly. believe that. Or you could take it in the way of, like, the police are saying that it's a hoax because maybe they're trying to hide something because they oh. know what's out there. Huh. You know? Maybe. I don't know. But another theory that people had was that it's a horse foal, which is just a baby horse. And I'm like, these things have hair, small heads, like not, they don't equal what they're describing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think these kids are probably smart enough to know the <laughs> That's difference. What I'm saying. Like they've grown up in this town. They would know what these baby animals look like. Yeah. Like if they're actually common, like, yeah. Literally. Like I, hmm. It makes no sense. But I guess the reason that this, like, the horse foal theory is popular is because the town of Dover is known to have far more horses than people. So, like, horses and baby horses are, like, very common. But police even said there are no animal tracks discovered at any of the areas of the sightings. So, and there were also no reports of any missing foals. So, like, yeah, <laughs> probably See, not that. that. It, it, like, just doesn't make sense. No. And, like, back to what we were saying... Like, the, if, if there really is more horses than people, these kids would know what they look like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, some people, like we said in your story, suggest that maybe it was an animal that was suffering from, like, a disease like mange or, like, even cancer, you know, and its head was large from, like, a tumor or something. Um, and this is actually a similar theory to, like, the chupacabra, if you remember, too. Because they're like, maybe it's a dog with, like, mange. Yeah. And I feel like people just like to use that because, I mean, it could be an animal with, like, a disease or something. But, like, also, it could just be another kind of animal. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the time with cryptids, they just, like, try to explain it away. Because, you know, people get scared of these things and they don't want them to be real, you know? Exactly. So, that could be the case here, too. Yep. That's so true. So true. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the people, they just are like, yeah, the Dover demon is just a cryptid that lives here in Dover. So (laughs) that's kind of like the theories, at least on like what it could be, which in my opinion, every single theory is weak. And I don't even normally believe like creature stories, but like (laughs) this one, I don't know. And I did send you the pictures if you want to look at it to see what these, because when you see a picture of it, you're like, okay, I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen any animal that even oh looks God. close. This thing looks like an alien. It literally looks like an alien. Like, I've never seen any animal that looks anything close to that. Mm. <laughs> At all. 
at all. So if you want to see the picture, again, go to our Instagram. Um, but anyways, in 2009, the Dover Demon was featured in an episode of The Lost Tapes, which apparently is an American horror TV show. But I've never heard of that, and I didn't get to watch it before this. But I've never heard of that either. I was like, what? I'm trying to the see that. Lost it's called tapes. The Lost Tapes. And do, yeah, do they like it. cover? Do they cover something new every time? Yeah, they do. Yep. I can so, look into that. Yeah, same. Um, but apparently, this show is like very popular. At least it was, and so that's how the Dover Demon like gained popularity is after okay. it was on the show. Okay. Yeah, and it also um, appears as a com- a comic book character um, in a series called Proof, which I've never heard of that, but you know, you know, you've made it if you're a comic book character, Dover Demon. Yeah. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, but there is one last theory as to what the Dover Demon could be. And this one, I might believe. Um, so, <laughs> it really might seem like this is the end of the story. But, however, it's not, okay? Some people believe that what these kids saw on those two nights in 1977 was actually something called the Managishi. Okay? Oh, So, Managishi is actually a race of trickster people known in the Cree folklore. So, we've talked about um, a couple other cryptids, like, having to do with the Cree folklore, but I forgot which ones they were, and I didn't write it down. But I know we've talked about them before. Um, But the Managishi are described to be semi-humanoid, with very thin, lanky arms and legs, with really big heads, and they do not have a nose. Okay, so, well, that sounds yeah, similar to that's this. like yeah. the only thing, the only theory that sounds anywhere close to what these kids saw, in huh. my opinion. Um, the Managishi are said to live between rocks, like in the rapids. So, you know, possibly. And the Managishi, so one of their biggest delights, okay, in life is to crawl out of their rocks, like their home rocks, and capsize the canoes of people who are canoeing through the rapids. What the heck? Mm-hmm. So the Managishi, like, they literally just wait until people are coming down the water, and then they spin them in their canoe to their death. Oh, my <laughs> They're, God. They're, like, actually really evil. That's insane. Oh, yeah. my God. So, um, yeah. So, actually, what's funny is that um, the pictures that I sent you, that's the um, Dover Demon. But I have a picture of what the Managishi is supposed to look like, and I'm going to um, send that to you right now so you can compare the two. And tell me your opinion on if you okay. think that they're, they're the same. Because mm-hmm. I think they look exactly the same, honestly. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> they look very similar. Very. And those are two different pictures. Like, I Googled two separate things to get those. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> that's the legend of the Dover Demon and possibly a Managishi sighting in Massachusetts. I don't know. I don't know. But huh. I kind of believe that maybe, maybe somehow that creature, like, got up in Massachusetts somehow, you know? So, yeah. I mean, it could have, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. That's crazy. It is crazy. Is there, like, so I I already said, like, the Missouri monster, like, they kind of don't celebrate it anymore or have anything there. Do they have stuff in Dover for you know, the Dover Demon? I didn't look to see if there was a festival, but I don't think so. Yeah. Because I, like, pretty much found all that, like, all the information I told you was, like, all I could find. So I have to assume No. No, like, uh... Like, no, they don't have, like, a festival or museums or anything. Like, a statue. Or a statue. Yeah, I don't think so. Dang. Okay. I know. <laughs> so sad. Our little cryptids this week, they have no recognition. It's just so I sad. Know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. We're giving them recognition by being mm-hmm. on the show. True that. That's so funny. Our stories were so similar. Yes. They connected. They connected a lot. That's so, so wild. That's we good. really don't plan that, guys. Not even kidding. We, yeah, we don't. <laughs> like, I feel like people don't believe us sometimes. I know. Not even kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We were going on a roll for a while, like, of having stuff that connected, and then we didn't. Yeah. We had, like, a, a few that a didn't low. at all. Yeah. And now we're back, yeah, baby. We, uh-huh. We're back. Maybe the next one will, too. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see. We'll see. But, um, definitely, definitely go check out our Instagram to see the pictures from this week, and... Go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and follow us. Yes, please. It helps us a lot. Yes. And subscribe. Get the word out. On YouTube. 
share with your friends. Um, you know, all the things. Do all yeah, the things. Just all the things. Yeah. Thank you for listening, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course, and always. Um, but other than that, I don't really have anything else for you guys this week. What about you, Savannah? I think that wraps it up. Okay, well, I guess we will see you guys next week. Okay, cue the music. <laughs>